I'm Keith Kelly with the County and County Chamber of Commerce, and today we're doing our candidate interviews. And today we have Nikki Arnold Swindle, who's running for Alabama House District 36. And Nikki, for your candidacy, just tell everybody a little bit about yourself. Thank you so much, Mr. Kelly. My name is Nikki Arnold Swindle. I am. I was born in Anniston. My family's from uh, Calhoun and St. Clair County, and uh, so I grew up around here in the area. Uh, I. Graduated from Jacksonville State University. I have degrees in political science and social work. And I am a chaplain candidate in the Alabama Army National Guard. So I have to give my disclaimer that I am not endorsed by the Department of Defense, the Department of the Army, the United States government, or the Alabama National Guard. But uh, I am a mother of six forever children and I've been a foster parent, an adoptive parent. And uh, my husband is a 25 year old uh, Army veteran, so that's a little bit more about me. I've been a volunteer here uh, for probably about 20 years off and on when we've lived here, so. Okay. Thank you. Our first question today deals with infrastructure. With the infrastructure challenges facing the state, what are your solutions for the infrastructure issues and how would you fund them? Well, Funding is obviously the, the, the big issue there with with everything in Alabama. Funding seems to be the big issue, so we definitely have to kind of restructure how we're doing our funding. So that's first and foremost. Second, the, the number one thing that I'm hearing from constituents is that the, the roads are terrible, that they really want something done with the roads. Now, I think something needs to be done with the roads. That absolutely does need to be done. I drive my cars down these roads too and have children who drive down them. Uh, but another concern is that we have to have infrastructure in place so that when we go to try to create jobs, that that infrastructure is in place so that we can attract businesses to create jobs for people. So it's kind of all tied together, isn't it? Mm -hmm. so. Okay, thank you. Our next mm -hmm. question deals with prescriptions. Uh, while prescriptions for opioids have fallen nationwide since 2012, Alabama still experiences a high rate of opioid-related prescriptions. In 2016, there were at least 1.2 opioid prescriptions for every individual in the state and an 82% increase in deaths from overdoses between 2006 and 2014. What potential measures do you support that might help mitigate this crisis? Thank you for asking that question. Uh, I actually had a family member who um, who struggled with uh, opioid addiction and I performed their funeral uh, about a year and a half ago. Um, th there were arguments over whether it was related to that or not, I believe that it was, but needless to say this is a very important issue to our family and, and I think that it has to be a multifaceted approach. Obviously I'm not a doctor, I depend on people who are specialists in, in areas that I'm not a specialist in to, to provide me with information. But what I do know from the research that I have done is that there are other alternatives being done in other places for things that can help with this. You know, um, I'm, I'm not necessarily the, the biggest fan of some alternatives, but I think that all alternatives have to be on the table. And at the end of the day, we have to invite in subject matter experts who can help us find a solution for this because it's affecting families and it's affected our family. Thank you. The next question deals with the, the difficult budgets with the state. Next year with budget considerations, what are your priorities and how would you fund them? Right, absolutely. So as, as I mentioned in my answer to your first question, the budget is always a concern. I think that part of the problem is that we have a very regressive tax structure here in Alabama and we have to rethink that. And so uh, I've been at multiple different sides of the socioeconomic stratus here in Alabama and, and I understand um, that at this point in my life, even though I don't make a lot of money, I could afford to pay a little bit more in property taxes, for instance. Whether that's the final answer or not, I don't know. I do think that when it comes to this lottery that people have talked about, that you know the, the voters ought to have a say in that. I don't think that's a decision that legislators ought to make. I think that the voters ought to have a say in that. As a minister, because that is part of my job, I also see um, 
the aspect of that that can be harmful to people. So I, I think that we have to have a multifaceted approach. One of the things we have to do is we have to get rid of the um, sales tax on groceries. We're one of only three states that fully taxes groceries in the whole United States. And so we have to make sure that our tax structure is set up in a way that's fair, but that still promotes business and job growth. So. Okay. Thank you. With a declining population in your district, what are your views and ideas on how to turn that around? Thank you for asking this question too, because I think that the that there again, it's all linked. I think the number one reason why there's a declining population in our district is because of a lack of opportunity. I think that this starts with fully funding public education at all levels. We have to do that. We have to have um, public-private partnerships with um, businesses so that we can provide job training and, and have programs and not just for for high school students which we need to have but also for trades for for young adults and even older adults who may be wanting to reconsider the jobs that they have if we have jobs particularly jobs that pay well and that are sustainable for our environment then we'll have more people stay I had to move away from the area right after um, I well, a couple years after I graduated from college, I moved to Huntsville to take a job at Redstone Arsenal mm -hmm. because there wasn't anything here. But when I got a chance to come back, I knew that I had to come back and try to make things better for my children. Mm -hmm. so. Thank you. What are your solutions to help provide necessary resources to support Alabama's current and future workforce needs? There again, it's it's all tied into to everything, right? Okay, so. As I said before, the number one thing we have to do is fully fund public education at all levels. And I think that that starts with making sure that our teachers are valued for the job that they do and that they're valued when they put in, you know, 20 or 30 years into our into our children and devoted their lives to that 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 we still value them even after they're gone. But we have to fully fund uh, preschool education. Uh, right now I think we've gotten it up so we provide uh, public pre-k for about 35 percent of students. The numbers say that we need to provide it for about 70 percent of students so that all students that want to have public pre-k is available for them. The other 30 percent of students their parents are going to choose another option for them either keeping them at home or sending them to you know a church school or a private preschool or some other option but we have to start with fully funding public education. Thank you. What measure uh, would you support to better stabilize hospital finances in order to prevent future closings? Wow. This is such an important question and, and I think that um, regular medical care as well as mental health care are in dire straits in our state. Um, our system is broken and people are hurting and it's time that we do something so I believe that one of the things that that we should have done is that we should have expanded Medicaid uh, that was money from the federal government it may not have lasted forever but it was money that we could have taken in any time we can take money from the federal government to have put back into our state to help support it then we need to do that because we have Alabamians paying tax yes we we pay less tax in Alabama than we actually receive from the federal government but right now it seems like we need to until we figure out our budget situation. Okay. So. Thank you. Uh, at this time, uh, if you would just take a couple of minutes and reflect on any of the answers you gave to any of the other questions that you may have thought something different or just anything that you as a candidate would like for the voters to know. Right. I think, as I said before, we, we have to remember that Alabama is broken. Our people are hurting. And it's time for a change. You know, uh, I believe that it's it's good to have a government that's representative of the people, truly representative of the people. And uh, our legislature does not look like our population. So I think that that's one thing that would be good if we could have the legislature look more like the population. I think that it's important uh, as a representative of the people for, for me to be out in the district listening to what people have to say about this because I want to hear what the people have to say. I've already held three town hall listening sessions to hear what some of the voters in the district have to say and I think it's really important for me to know what their opinions are on each of these. It's also important for the voters to understand that 
I am willing to be held accountable and come back into the district at least once a quarter and have these town halls if I'm elected so that they can tell me what they don't like about what I've done, but also so I can explain to them things that they may not understand and why I've made some of the decisions I've made. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, we're not going to agree 100% with anybody. It's just not going to happen. But a big problem that we have in our pol political system in the United States today is just division. And I think that it's time that we make America and Alabama united again. So, Thank you. Uh, we would like to thank you for your willingness to serve and, and take part in the political process. And um, Ms. Nikki Arnold Swindle uh, re running for Alabama House of Representatives District 36, and we thank you for being here today. Yes, sir. Thank you so much for having me.